Hello. In this video, we will be looking into feedback decoupler and centralized controller designs. In the previous video, we had an idea about what the decoupler mean and at the same time we had seen the feed forward way of decoupling. Again the decoupler is of the form which is helping us in getting paired input and output for the multivariable CISO, prob CISO problem to be solved. Let's start understanding feedback decoupler design. To begin with, we'll consider the system as a linear system and the system has m inputs and m outputs. We'll consider the uh, square system matrix, uh, system matrix uh, uh, dimensions. The dimensions is such that the system matrix is square. And at the same time, we'll consider that the entire state is measured. We will understand why these assumptions are important. Uh, we already know that this linear system state space representation is given by x dot equals ax plus bu and y is equal to cx plus du. Now in this case what we will consider is we will consider uh, that to understand it we will consider that there is a direct input output relationship is not there but if it is there then we will consider that even if the, it is there then we can say that the ith row of the uh, d is equal to 0. If we will consider this way then we will consider applying chain rule. If I if am considering, uh, it is easy to consider that this is 0 by considering that okay the entire uh, input output relationship I am, I am not considering for the control design that can be considered later on. When I apply this particular chain rule then I take the derivative of ith row of y, y uh, this is going to be the ith row of c times x dot alright. Now x dot is now replaced by ax plus bu that I already have. Given this, what are we going to achieve with this is that we will keep taking this derivative. Now this derivative is to be taken till I have some non-zero term for the b appears. I am looking forward for designing a decoupler. Now this decoupler is going to give me the direct input and output relationship. Now since this particular output, this input is not appearing in this particular y output because I am not considering that particular d to be 0. If this d is not there, then I would like to bring that in terms of considering the derivative of it. Now if I am taking the derivative, let us take first derivative of it. So I will get the term of the uh, in, in yi dot I get term of u as i c b u. Now let us say this is equal to 0. So then I will take the second derivative of yi, the second derivative for the ith row. So this way I will keep doing it. So for the second derivative what I will give get i c a to the power 2 b u. So this is what is the u, u term, the rest of the terms are also there but uh, this is what is my u term. So this is i a through of c a square and b. Now if this is not 0 then I will, if this is 0 then I will keep doing this particular exercise of getting this y i third derivative. I will keep doing it till I get this particular term which is corresponding to u as non-zero. So this particular um, ri times that derivative is taken is taken till the u term is appearing is called output relative degree. Now this output relative degree is going to give me this particular uh, d ri dt ri. So this I have taken the derivative ri times of the ith row of y. This gives me this particular relationship and we know that we are stopping it 
which means this is not equal to 0 and rest of the other i c a r i minus 2 b are all zeros. So, this way what we are achieving here is that the output is being related to the input through the system and system matrix and this is going to help us in designing the decoupler as we see in the next slide. So, now we will have we will start by compiling all these i uh, measurements and I say this is a y tilde for example. This is having certain derivatives of y1, y2 up to ym because there are m measurements available. So, certain cases this will be say R1 is just 1, R3 is just 3 and so R3 is 2 and so on. So, then I have I have say dy by dt, dy1 by dt, but the other one was d to the power of 5, 4 y2 by dt4. This can happen. So, I will keep taking the derivatives till I am getting the, the u term that is what we will consider. So, this R1, R2, Rm could be different for individual measurements that is the idea. And now when, when I am clubbing all these all these equations relative to i th rows, I get this uh, vector, this particular matrix and this particular matrix, which I am turning down as h tilde x plus q tilde u, alright. Now looking at this particular equations, we have y tilde equals h tilde x plus q tilde u, this we have derived it. Now in this case my control input can be returned as q tilde inverse y tilde minus h tilde x. What is q tilde in this case? This q tilde is nothing but this particular matrix, h tilde is this matrix, alright. So, we have we can now set a form of state feedback such that u equals minus k d times x plus f times u y tilde. This will get clear a little later when I show you the block diagram. As of now you can understand that now I have a transformed y tilde means the measurements are being y instead of y I have y tilde a transformed variable y dot y tilde. So, what is this particular y tilde? Let us understand this. This y tilde is nothing but the different derivatives ith derivatives that I had taken. So, when I see the relationship between y s and y tilde, this is nothing but a diagonal relationship in terms of the transfer function forms. This is integrator, secondary integrator, multiple integrations um, uh, of the power of R1 at, at, at those, those many integrators uh, equal to the R1. R1 times of integrators. But the interesting thing to observe is that this particular matrix is now diagonal. So, I need to design now y tilde the, the controller between y tilde and y of s, correct. So, this is my uh, final more or less we are saying that the feedback controller, feedback uh, decoupler is helping us in getting the transform variable uh, y tilde of s which is giving me the relationship which is of a diagonal form. So, this is my output of the system, this becomes my y tilde as a transformed u star in case of the ideal disc decoupler and this becomes a di diagonal form of the system. Now, into in order to understand this better what we have is now uh, the equations saying that y tilde is equal to h tilde x plus q tilde u. So, we have y tilde given by h tilde x, h tilde sorry uh, let me let me go back. h tilde x plus q tilde u. Okay. So, what we have here is uh, y tilde given by h tilde x plus q tilde u. 
And this is something we have, uh, I am representing in the block diagram form. If I have y tilde given by uh, q inverse, so, so this, this term is your q inverse, q tilde inverse y tilde. So your u becomes q tilde inverse y tilde plus h tilde x, correct? So this is exactly what is happening and, and of course um, there is a small correction here. This will take care of this q in either, either I should have q tilde inverse over here or instead of that this block should be over here q tilde inverse, all right. Having said that the idea here is to tell you, show you that this particular form is now my diagonal form and because there is a relationship between y and phi tilde which is giving you a diagonal form. And we solve this by the way of a feedback methodology which is involving h q q in q tilde inverse h tilde, all right. Similar to the previous case, you have q tilde and its inverse appearing here. But at the same time, there is a high chance that you do not, again this q tilde inverse is dependent on the uh, A matrix, C matrix and, and so and so forth, C, C vector and so and so forth. Fair enough. Let us see, uh, you, would you be able to find a feedback decoupler if you have been given this particular A, B and C matrices. You, this is a homework problem, use the same method to convert the system in the diagonal form using feedback. As a summary, the diagonal behavior using coordination of the sensors and actuators when this is needed, this, this becomes a very powerful technique, mainly because it uses a feedback methodology for conversion to the diagonalization. It cannot be achieved using standard industrial regulators. But at the same time one can design, since now we, have, we already have digital method, methods available, we should be able to design for newer applications this q tilde and h tilde matrices to get the feedback methodology for uh, getting, the, feedback is always bet, is better in terms of the model uh, robustness and so on and so forth. Disturbance rejection is only if your disturbance enters independently independently at each output is needed. In the previous case, this was very prevalent uh, feed forward way of decoupler design. Here your, your disturbance rejection is going to be better because this is getting more or less solved with the help of a uh, feedback method in any case. It is also sensitive to the model errors because you have designed new blocks which are q tilde inverse and h tilde which are dependent on a matrices, uh, the system matrices and the in input and output matrices. It needs, this particular methodology specifically needs full state measurements. Having said that, this particular method has been used in many practical cases where you have the full state measurement available and you have the nice methods to get the derivatives of the, uh, derivatives of the um, derivatives of the uh, measurements available and so on, all right. Now coming to a centralized control method. Now you have looked into um, MIMO system which can be simplified as a MVC SO method, but in certain cases that is also not possible. So then I will have to design a centralized controller. I am not looking at designing independent CISO systems, but a centralized control system which would be able to, which will be able to control all the states. So in this case, I am um, again going to use a very simple methodology pole placement which we are using in the CISO methods. Certain times you will have, you will get the solution since it is too many variables to certain extent you will get the solution. Number of independent sensors is equal to the order of the system is what our assumption is. All this or in, in other way we can say all the states are measured. And so in this case to understand little more, more carefully, uh, I am considering that the, the C matrix is nothing but an identity matrix 
means that the output is directly related to the state of the system. So for the LTI state feedback control methodology, what we consider here is that uh, the control input U is, is defined by minus Kx plus R, where K is my gain matrix and R is the reference point that where I want to uh, settle down. Because finally, um, one has to make this particular bias correction every time. Uh, because not all the time your, your, um, your, uh, you would like the state to converge to the origin. You would like the state to converge to a particular reference value R and that is why this kind of a correction is needed. So for example, now I have this particular uh, uh, gain matrix K11, K12 is to be considered. At the same time, I will talk about this particular variable V, which is relevant to the reference vector, set point vector or a reference vector R to be considered. So this particular value V, the bias value that we consider here, where the system has to rest, is to be adjusted at the control input side and this bias is calculated by the, con the, the, um, uh, the transfer, function uh, transfer function gain value at S is equal to 0 or the steady state gain value. And this is given by G, G0 inverse times R because this is a vectored form and that is the reason I have brought this here. Otherwise in the CISO form it is very uh, simple way of adjusting the gain based on the uh, gain of the system at steady state. All right. Now what we get here is x dot equals a minus b k x plus b times v because now I what I did in this case is nothing but I had a system uh, state space representation as a x plus b u, u is replaced by k x plus v. So sorry this is minus k x. So minus k x plus uh, v. Now if the system is fully reachable, the closed loop eigenvalues can be assigned to any arbitrary desired position by appropriately selecting the k. So my job for the controller design now becomes designing the gain matrix k here. And that is interestingly can be solved using the pole placement direct method, simple way. So we have a polynomial for which I have uh, polynomial, the characteristic polynomial is can be obtained by SI minus ACL, I is my diagonal matrix and the ACL is the, is the closed loop systems system matrix. So this is what is my desired closed loop characterization. Now this particular one is to be matched with my A minus BK value because that is how I am adjusting my gain K. Now zeros of this polynomial are the closed loop eigenvalues that is what we, we understand it and we need to calculate k so that polynomial is exactly the desired one. Again there is a matching purpose needed but at the same time it is fairly okay when we are doing the pole placement method. Now for example let us take this as an example here to see what, what comes as a centralized controller design. Let us say this is a 3 cross 3 uh, system matrix which means I have 3 states, fair enough. B is 2 cross 3 which means there are 2 inputs into the system. Let us say I want to consider desired settling time is 1 second. So if the desired settling time is 1 second, I need to place poles at minus 3 and minus 4. If that is the case, then my characteristic equation should turn out to be s plus 3 s plus v whole square. Let us say we want to place 2 poles at minus 4 because I have a third order system sitting there. I need to have some idea, some, some desired poles to be considered as third, three, 3 number of poles to be considered. So this gives me the polynomial characteristic, desired characteristic polynomial as s cube plus 11 s square plus 40s plus 48s. At the same time I have to design u which is k11, k12, k13 and x1, x2, x3. So there are 6 variables and I, when I do the coefficient matching I will get 3 equations over here. s cube is 
de definitely normalized one. So I will consider coefficient matching. So then I will get three equations in this case. In the CSO case, we had three equations and three un unknowns. So we'll get unique solution. Whereas here we have three equations and six unknowns. So we will have many choices available for taking six such gain values. So which one to consider? One can apply some kind of an optimal way of finding out what should be the um, what should be the different constraints to be considered for gain values. I can add some extra uh, performance metric and then look forward for getting some optimal solutions for the gain. Typically we get some or the other gain values which are matching with our performance criterias. This is again tuning is not at all, not at all intuitive. One has to come up with some uh, trial and error method here. Since this is centralized, this is a non-fault tolerant method. Anything gets spoiled in this controller or anything, any other part is missing, any other failures happen, the entire system shuts down as compared to the MVC so method where uh, individual control loop um, can even if one control loop is not working, others will keep working on it. So some uh, some performance output uh, on the certain output variables you will get. Further, these centralized control methods are implemented via non-standard equipment such as data acquisition cards or communication or the industrial computers because we need to estimate the state and then this particular state estimation. Uh, uh, to certain extent is helping us in getting the gain values and so on and so forth because that's where the optimal performance that that can be considered over here. Gain values are again non-tunable so one has to enter into it and come up with some method to look at what the performance with respect to the gain. It's not that one I'm, I'm changing this particular gain of k11 what is going to be the effects on k12, k21 and so on. Uh, on, on other output performance, it's very unpredictable and we will not be able to match it and that's the reason tuning is, is non-intuitive as compared to the PID tunings where we had at least some idea that okay, when I'm changing the integral gain, what is expected, right? Uh, in this case, one has to come up with some optimal way of finding the gain values. That's all and again the same two references can be considered for more understanding of the centralized control as well as feedback, feedback decoupler method from these two references. Thank you.